Do you think Kanye West, if he had a black woman, things would be different? Oh, absolutely. I think Kim Kardashian used him. And the fact that they're making that man pay $200,000 a month in child support when both he and the wife are billionaires are absolutely uh, ridiculous. I think they want to break him. I think they want to break him. And although That's I don't crazy. agree with the way in which Kanye articulated some of his thoughts, I appreciate the fact that he was the first black man since Michael Jackson to speak truth to power, to specifically identify certain communities of Europeans who have exploited gangster rap, black entertainers, and other people since the inception. The and nobody has called them out. He's the first to do it since Michael Jackson. I can't. They try to slander our brother over Talk here. Talk to him. About what? Over the summer... I guess there was a, a video of you, I guess, uh, oh, they tried to say you, yeah, they, they tried to <laughs> say you had jungle fever, Dr. Okay. Omar. Jungle fever in the mall. Okay, let me I tell you what happened. Doctor, I thought we talked to him about that already. No, that Somebody tried to hack my phone. Like, think of it like this. Imagine it's a chess game. Number one, you didn't even realize a game was being played. You didn't even know you were on a board. You have no clue. You just saying, I want some money. I want to grind. I want to hustle. I'm going to get that money by any means. I want that success. So in your world, you just want success. And then whatever that looks like to you, it could be a, ca a big chunk of cash. It could be a huge house. It could be bad chicks. It could be fast cars, nice cars. That's just where your head is at, right? And as you upgrade yourself as an individual and, and go up and up and up, then you look up and you don't even realize you're on a chessboard, but you're a fucking a, a rook. You damn near a, a queen or, or a bishop or something like you. You are being used like a pawn. You're not even you're not even like controlling your own moves. But then you're not even it's already bad enough. You don't even realize you're on the board. But then it's even worse. You're not even using the full potential of the power that your piece has. Your board is already done. Then you get on top of that. A lot of these people be in checkmate before they even realize they had a they had a. A chance to play for positioning. Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. So my drums not making it home. Morning, everybody. Sit, it's DJ Envy, Charlemagne the guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the no building. No King Kong consciousness is back. Doctor Orr Johnson, welcome. Peace and Pan African is glad camera. to be back. Glad to have you, man. Um, first of all, you look slim, brother. Thanks you done, you, you done slimmed down a little bit, huh? Uh, yes, sir. I think I have. Um, I didn't do nothing intentional, so let me not sit here and lie. Okay. <laughs> I guess it's just, you know, getting older and wiser, I hope. And first right. things first, man, congrats on the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy. I've been paying attention. I yes, see sir. that you, you, you yes, got sir. the building. Yes, sir. You, you, you've been doing renovations on the building. Yes, I saw sir. you put the HVAC in, all yes, kind of sir. other stuff. We're just about done. Uh, electric is awaiting a permit. HVAC is awaiting controls. They're actually at the school right now. <laughs> Plumbing is just about done. They got one more piece. Fire alarm is done. They got to check one more piece to that. Uh, the monitoring system is done. I'm hoping by the end of the calendar year we can get our inspection and have a grand opening in February, hopefully. And you waiting on, you got to get accreditation too? Or? Nah, well, your accreditation comes from the state. Gotcha, gotcha, so it's gotcha. the state that gives you the license to operate. Mm -hmm. If you want accreditation beyond that, you can seek out professional accreditation bureaus, but that's not legally shit. required. Man, why don't you talk about that more, uh, Dr. Umar, especially being that they tried to clown you for so long about, you know, not I having a school. I don't mind that because if you know that your mission is genuine, it's no need to respond to the negativity because at some day, the fruit of your works will manifest. Ooh. You, you follow. Yeah, so you my self, thing yeah. is, why argue when you know one day they're going to see the school? Now talk about the, the, the process, because it was a long time. And the crazy process. part is, the, the same people would be the ones that don't have anything to say. Not not even a congratulations or, uh, you know, a good job or nothing like that. They just, you know, quick to comment something negative, but never have anything positive to say hey, at all twice tribulation yes, sir. And hurdles. So yes sir talk about that a little bit and what you had to get through and also getting funded yes sir we um took our first donation chair. in st louis 2014 we heard about the st paul's college which was an hbc Child closed in virginia fuck, they wanted two million so we tried to raise it as quickly as we can that was a bit ambitious we didn't succeed mm -hmm. it was sold to an asian uh company unfortunately an hbcu sold to another race i think is a great disappointment for us as a people so then we just started looking for a day school. So I went to uh, Chicago, Detroit, Florida, uh, Ohio, 
all over the country, I was just flying, looking for a school. Mm -hmm. And then in 2017, I was on LoopNet, which was my main source of new property, and I saw this campus in Wilmington, Delaware, that I had heard about, but never had a chance to see. So I'm on my way to Nat Turner celebration, mm -hmm. uh, August 21st, 2017, the Great North American Eclipse. I stopped, I saw the campus, I said, this looks pretty nice. When I got back from Nat Turner, I had to go to Cuba first to get my EFI initiation. I practiced Yoruba spirituality. Came back from Cuba, and I got a chance to go into the school, and I saw it. I said, we want this school, but they wanted $2 million. We couldn't afford that. We only had a half of a million. Mm -hmm. So I negotiated with them from August of 17 until February of 19, and they finally decided to sell us the building for the money that we had. Wow. So now we got the building. So what's been going on the past three and a half years? Getting contractors who you can trust to help you with it. And contractors were not kind to us, man. They ripped us off. They scammed us. Con. They stole out the building. The con is real. The con and contractor. I've been, I've been dealing with it for the last five years. It's very years. real, brother. Absolutely. And then finally, we had our second FDMG Damn. festival this past September the 10th. And I said, you know what? We may have to step outside the African-American community to get this done to do. because we've been waiting three years for our people to help us. Not for free. Mm -hmm. We could afford to pay them, but they wasn't being honest with us mm -hmm. and straight up. And, of course, we know that's not all of our contractors. We want to be clear. We've met a lot of uh, decent contractors along the way. But the ones who we had to use because they was licensed and certified where we are, they didn't really do us right. So I said, let's go with some white folks. And guess what? Here we are 90 days later. And the white contractors have gotten us to the finish line mm. in three months mm -hmm, mm -hmm. versus three years mm. waiting on our own people. So what does that say? It says that we need the Frederick Douglass and Marcus Garvey Academy. Or, it says that black boys have to be raised and trained in how to be black men and how to be committed to the black community. Because I think as a community, we've lost our integrity, our honor, our loyalty, mm -hmm. and our commitment. If I was who I am for black people, Death for the, sign, for the Mexican-American community, that school would have been done three years ago. If I was who I am to the Asian community, the Anglo-Saxon community, the Native American community, that school gets done the first year we purchased it. Mm -hmm. We're not sitting here three and a half years after purchase, just now getting to the finish line and needing white people to get us there. And what, know, is the, what is the curriculum going to look like? We, our, in addition to your required math, science, language, and social studies, we're going to have financial and economic science. Mm -hmm. Critical. How to do your own taxes. Real estate international investments, business planning, because as we've talked about before, hey, going Chad, to college have to go. is not automatically a recipe for success, but it is I might automatically have to go get my, a recipe my, uh, for diploma debt. again. So for those young men who want to go to college, we want to <laughs> give them that ability to do that, but we also want to give them other means of making an economic uh, impact and survival uh, plan for their lives. So we got financial and economic. We have dietary and nutritional, how to eat to live, a lot of your Dr. Sabi type of information. Mm -hmm. Dr. Laila Africa, rest in peace to both of them. That will be in there. Agricultural and agronomical. We're going to teach them how to grow. They have to grow their own food in order to graduate. We have to become agriculturally self-sufficient. In addition to that, spiritual and astrological science, I want our young men to understand how African people related to God before Abraham, mm -hmm. before Jesus, before Muhammad. Mm -hmm. Those religions, and all due respect to all of them, they're only Christianity is 2,000 years old. Islam is 1,500 years old. Judaism is about four or 5,000 years old. But traditional African culture and spirituality is more than a quarter of a million years old. We dealt with God far longer from a non-Abrahamic tradition than we have from an Abrahamic tradition. Nothing's wrong with those. But I want our children to understand how we deal with the ancestors, the how we deal with the earth and the land. And so we're going to have that. There will also be science of the black family. So that includes science of the black man, the black woman, the black child, how to be a gentleman, how to take care of your woman, how to raise your children, how to be a leader in the community. And of course, there will be military and political science. If I didn't mention that, we do want to teach them survival skills, traditional African martial arts, both with right, and so without that, weapons. Shall we have that school, the world that we live in. Why is Africa the richest continent, but school? in the poorest condition? Why was Barack Obama made no, president and it had no, nothing crazy. to do no, with America no, crazy, reinventing no, herself? Okay, why has multiculturalism been used as a weapon against African people? So we want to make sure that we are graduating well-rounded young men who can go anywhere in the world and build independent communities. We are a nation-building academy. We are not college prep. We are not military prep. 
We are not trade school prep. They will be ready for any of those. Mm. But above all that, we are nation building prep. Can, can you answer that President Obama question? I'd like to know the answer to that. Oh, Barack Obama was made president for two reasons. Domestically, he was made president to force uh, alternative sexual lifestyles onto black children. Uh, uh, ready for independent mm. Oh, Barack Obama was made president. Our nation building prep. Can, can you answer that uh, President Obama question? I'd like to know the answer to that. Oh, Barack Obama was made president for two reasons. Domestically, he was made president to force uh alternative sexual lifestyles onto black children uh sexual confusion as a means of population control and internationally Damn. he was made president to go to africa and to force africom there to build military bases all throughout the continent and guess Damn. what there's been about six coups in africa over the past year and every single coup was in a country with a united states military base no coincidence Damn. america only practices democracy where the person who wins the election has an agenda that is in the interest of america charlamagne you can be elected president but if your agenda is not in the interest of the white power structure you will be overthrown Don't democracy me. only lasts as long as the person winning the election is favorable to the agenda of the power structure. Well, I think you see that all the time, especially with the GOP. You saw that in Georgia, right? They didn't care if Herschel Walker was a... A, a, t a lot of people cognitive this is this and that's going to kick in during this whole interview. Terrible. It's going to be toxic to read the chat. They knew that if he got into... But typically, we have a, a thinking community, so... To the Senate, shouldn't be too the bad. Of the GOP. Let's see what the comments think. The man that stubble with his words to the tire interview with Jim. I'm just walking in the this and we're going to disagree with him. No, Dr. Umar actually funny as shit. Like, no bullshit. He got some funny ass clips. Um, right. This is the thing. Um, let's get back okay. to it. Who won the runoff? Warnock. Warnock won. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Here's what I'm going to say to that. And my maternal ancestry is from Georgia. It didn't make a difference if Warnock won. It didn't make a difference if Herschel no, Walker won. With the video, it just because started. both of them are candidates who are aligned with two white racist political parties. The Democratic Party don't care about black people. The Republican Party don't care about black people. Raphael Warnock hasn't done nothing his first term. He's not going to do nothing his second term. And, and if Herschel Walker would have won, it would have been the same thing. One of the things we have to do as black people, we have to get off this Republican-Democratic political dichotomy I because agree. it does not serve us and it wasn't created for our interests. That is a white intellectual conversation, whether you're a Republican or a Democrat. Our dichotomy is not democracy or republicanism. Our dichotomy is freedom or oppression. That's the black dichotomy. Who belongs to the Freedom Party? Who belongs to the House Negro Party? That's it. Mm -hmm. Look at the Congressional Black Caucus. 59 African Americans, and more than half of them are old enough to be your grandparents. Why do we have people in the CBC in their 70s, in their 80s? In their 60s. Don't get me wrong. In African culture, we believe an old man for counsel well, and a young, a young man, man for, for war. war. Mm -hmm. But look who we got in D.C. fighting for justice for African people. They're senior citizens. And we wonder why nothing's getting done because they don't want to pass the baton. And this is an issue that we have had in the black community for a long time. Not just Congressional Black Caucus, black church, black community organization, where we don't want to pass the baton to the next generation. And why not? Black men and women are seldom given an opportunity to experience real power. So when we get a taste of real power, we don't like to give it up because we're not used to it. That's why you got 100-year-old pastors running churches when you got 20 and 30-year-old young pastors in the same congregation who will never get a chance to give a sermon. That's why you see so many old leaders in black organizations because they don't want to pass the baton because the old black man's ego is bigger and stronger than a young black man's ego. And I, I want to go back to something you said about <clears throat> Obama. You know Obama was opposed to same-sex marriage in uh, <clears throat> 08. Oh, when he ran. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the power structure told him you're going to uh, support this when you get in it. That was the second term. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Okay. Because the agenda had not yet been set, but when the agenda was set, he had to carry it out because Obama belonged to a white racist political party. Let mm. me ask you a question. The students that want to attend your, your school. Yes, sir. Is there, uh, Thank you. is there anything, what are the qualifications, if there are any? Uh, That's a great question. That's a great question. Be black. There's really no qualifications. So be black. So it doesn't and if matter if you're gay or straight. It doesn't matter if you're mixed or anything. You can. Well, a mixed African, for those of us who are revolutionary pan-African nationalists, Garveyites, a mixed African is considered an African. Mm -hmm. I do not discriminate between a black man with a white mother or a black man with a with a black mother or a black woman with a white father or a black woman with a uh, black father. If one of your parents is an African 
we accept you as an African as long as you identify. You have to be psychologically black and you also have to be biologically black. I believe that's you understand, but we don't take issue with mixed race. Many of the greatest Pan-Africanists who ever lived were mixed race. There's even some argument that the greatest revolutionary of all time in his country, the prophet Nat Turner, he may have been of mixed race. His mother may have been raped by the slave master. You see, so we don't take issue over that. On the plantation, you had no control how you came into this world. Now, with that being said, it's important that black men and black women, even if they be mixed race Africans, they understand that we will not perpetuate that mistake because it does not benefit the black community. So although you may have a, a white parent, you will only produce children with someone who looks like you. Be careful drinking that. That's called liquid death now. You should. It's water. Look at the can. It's water. It's I'm gonna make sure. I, I actually think that's you don't right. get my brother nothing. Just get you some no, regular no, no, water, no, man. No, 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 no water. <laughs> the CIA is the CIA in here today? No, I think that's, that's uh, I think that's Wiz Khalifa's water. Actually, I think he's. Oh, okay, there. okay. Wiz Khalifa from PA, so that okay. might be okay. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna be careful because I know when Brother Malcolm went to the Middle East, they poisoned his drink. I think Malcolm I had to get yeah, pumped. Yeah. They tried to kill Malcolm in the Middle East. Johnny, we ain't trying to kill you. We ain't trying to kill you. We I know y'all not. Okay, but I don't know who else around here. Okay, Johnny Cochran was poisoned. And you know, Johnny Cochran was murdered because Johnny Cochran was on the verge of finding out, or he was going to determine how much reparations America owes African people. Mm -hmm. Right after that, Johnny Cochran ends up dead. Patrice Lumumba in the Congo, first democratically elected uh, prime minister of the Congo, uh, they poisoned his daughter in trying to poison him. The CIA threw the toothpaste. So we got to be clear that there's a history. Dr. Khalid Abdul Muhammad, a leader of the uh, New Black Panther Party, he uh, may have CIA also was been not playing, bro. poisoned. So uh, we got to be careful about what we eat and what we drink, especially me. So, so what do you think about the study of HR 40? You know what I mean? Because I mean that study is the reparations bill. Yeah, it's the reparations bill that's supposed to see and determine you know who gets reparations and how much reparations. Well, let's take it a step further. Mm -hmm. The state of California legislature just approved in the past few days. A bill that will give each African American in the state of California two hundred and thirty-three thousand dollars as a reparations payment. I, I think. <laughs> Ain't too late to move to California, is it? <laughs> I, I think that's a bullshit. I think Gavin Newsom is just doing that because reparations is going to be the buzzword for twenty twenty-four to get black people energized. It is, and it's also a trap. Now, first of all, the reparations movement comes out of the Pan-Africanist movement. We gave birth to reparations. It's not anything new. Uh, that's our thing, mm -hmm. although it's for the whole people. A cash payout for reparations is a trap. Boy, you thought the PUA was bad. And motherfuckers was only getting like 7000 Some people was getting 20000 You thought PPA was bad. You know what, how fast, and I'm going to say, I'm going to just admit this. You know how fast people going to run through that 200 grand? Like, let's just say they give every black person 200 grand across the country. You know how fast they will blow through it, bro? No bullshit. So many people ran through PPA, PUA, all that, all the gifted government money, you know, whatever you call it. And got nothing to show for it. And that was that little bit of money. And people would think, oh, if I got 200K, I wouldn't fumble it like I would fumble 2,000. You're going to fumble it even worse. Because money management skills is not dependent on, you know... Just giving you a huge amount of money. There's people who, who fumbled half a billion dollars. Mm. And the reason a cash payout for reparations is a trap is because so much of what needs to be fixed in American society for African people will take more than cash to do it. In other words, I give D8 DJ injury $233,000. Or if I take the Bob Johnson plan, he said each American African is due $350,000, right? I give you $350,000. Does that stop mass incarceration? Nope. Does that stop miseducation? Does that stop gentrification? Does that stop police genocide? Does that guarantee us access to wealth? I mean, in the state of California... That Access to wealth thing is disgusting when you really find out, especially about redlining and how like you know with certain pop properties, they they'll know you, especially in like like a lot of people use real estate to get wealth and you know to create to you know uh, leverage loans against their houses and properties etc. And it is a strong and long history of preventing people of certain ethnicities from acquiring property. From acquiring the loans from the banks and saying, okay, what's your name? What's your ethnicity? 
I, we're not going to approve you. Or we're going to give you a super hard time to, to get this uh, property. Meanwhile, somebody come in, they get a they get a lower rate, they get a low, they get an easier chance to get through, and they just instantly go and grab the crib, that same crib which they might have passed down through families that they might have like used to to you know profit from and create some sort of net worth and get against you know hedge against their fucking poverty that they were going through. And it's like goddamn, nigga. California, what can you get with two hundred and thirty-three thousand dollars? I'm not even sure if that's enough for a house. And on top of that, the minute they give you the payment, they can reduce the value of the payment through inflation. Mm -hmm. So I can flood the economy with money so the two thirty-three is only worth one twenty mm -hmm. in about twenty-four hours. And then guess what they're gonna do dollars? I'm not even sure if that's enough for a house. And on top of that, the minute they give you the payment, they can reduce the value of the payment through inflation. Mm -hmm. So I can flood the economy with money so the two thirty three is only worth 120 mm -hmm. in about 24 hours and then guess what they're going to do after they give their reparations to african people they're going to find subsidy programs to give to the lgbtq to the women to immigrants to other people so at the end of the day what looked like a step up for black people would be a step back if i was in charge of the reparations conversation number one control of all black music must only be done through the black community no non-african can control our music Prince, Michael Jackson, Whitney Houston, Biggie Tupac, if, if, if the publishing, if the marketing, if the promotion, if the recording is not controlled by black people, that has to change. We own our own music. Nobody can own, sell, produce, publish, promote black music but black why, people. Why, why is that so important? Because music is one of America's leading export industries. Oh, sure, America okay. makes more money off black music than almost anything else that she sells. So if we control the music, we have a steady stream of global revenue where we can build a black Wall Street in right every right. single city in America for black people. That's how much money will be coming in from black music. That's mm -hmm. one. Two, all black e inventions return to us permanently. Everything we invented is a permanent patent for Africans. And if you want to use it, you must pay us a percentage. The cell phone, we invented that. Internet, that's ours. Helicopter, that's ours. Self-lubricating engine, the microphone, the stop sign, the walkie-talkie. Why are those lights on right now? Because a black man named Louis Latimer wrote a textbook that taught China, the UK, Canada, and America, how to light up a whole city at night. Without Lewis Latimer, you don't get street lights at night. You don't get constant illumination anywhere in the world. So guess what? Anybody running lights, you paying black people. Take back ownership like of our music. Take back ownership Egypt. of our inventions. You know, Next on the list is all the confiscated in lands. And studying we had the hundreds of thousands stuff. of acres of land stolen from us between 1865 and Malcolm's assassination in 1965. We need to put together a research team that's going to investigate all the land that was stolen from African people and return it back. Since most of our people are dealing with homelessness, we have the highest homelessness rate in black America since the 60s. If we can get our land back, that will go a long way to getting a lot of our single mothers and their children off the street. In addition to that, America has about 10 major exports, gold, oil, water, mm -hmm. electricity. We get a 25% cut. Permanently, this is perpetual. Mm -hmm. Every time America makes a dollar, we get 25 cents of that dollar as part of the reparations payment. American Africans, 60% sure. of us, make up 10 states. All 10 of the states that represent 60% of us are seaboarding states. We should automatically control the port so we know what's coming in, what's going out, and we also get a percentage of that. But here's my biggest issue with reparations three. Mm -hmm. One, psychological damages. I'm not hearing enough of the reparations talking heads discuss enough about the psychological damages. You know you can get far more from what you're owed psychologically than you can ever get for 243 years of unpaid labor on the plantation. The psychological damage is what, what, what affects us the most. Every time you see a black man with a white woman, that's psychological damage. Every mm -hmm. time you see and, a black woman a with a blonde studies. wig on her head, that's psychological damage. There's a bunch of studies out on, um, there's a guy who does it. I can't remember the psychologist's name, but I used to watch a lot of his talks and in, in his, in his studies. Um, that talks a lot about generational trauma being genetic. Trauma being genetic, passed down genetically. Go damage. Every time you see a little black boy or girl playing with a white doll you know instead of a black doll, that's psychological damage. Of... When you see a black man take the life of, of so a... all that, all that physical trauma, all that ass whoopings, all the all the breakdowns, everything that was witnessed and seen. Just think about that, how that impacted shit. Another bro. black man. But that's... a black, no, no, it wasn't. I say a black man or a white man. 
psychological damage. America owes us more for the psychological holocaust than she can ever owe for the labor. So we need to talk more about that. In addition to that, I don't hear nobody talking about the role the Arabs played in the transatlantic slave trade. I don't hear anybody talking about the role that the European Jews played in the slave trade. I don't hear nobody talk about the role that the Catholic Church played in the slave trade. If we're going to talk about reparations, bring every group that was responsible, those who financed the slave ships. That'd be Nigerians too, though. Okay, let's talk about that. Mm -hmm. There was participation from some African kingdoms. We know that Dahomey, for example, which was popularized in the Lion King movie. The Excuse Woman me, King. The Woman King movie. There was some African participation, but guess what? The transatlantic slave trade was a European operation. It was controlled. It grew. It was financed by Europeans. When many of the African nations found out what was really being done to us because in Africa there was no concept of chattel slavery there was no such thing as owning people forever there was no such thing as perpetual ownership of an entire family line or a bloodline you understand we had there was no such thing as being dehumanized European slavery stripped African people of our humanity there's no precedent for that in the world before European chattel slavery they didn't know what they were getting into they were wrong and can be held accountable mm -hmm. but let's not take the onus off of the true power structure behind slavery and that was the white man i need to say portuguese well portuguese mm -hmm. was in it the dutch was in it the italians was in it the germans was in it who didn't have a hand either in slavery outright or colonization that came after it and when you factor in colonization with slavery you can't possibly blame an african nation for that because they suffered during colonization well, Leo, with as the much as from, did so, in slavery. so i reject any proposal that wants to make African people more liable for slavery than the white people who owned, controlled, expanded, and benefited. Oh, I agree from with it. that. Yeah, I, I don't. I, they're definitely not more liable. It's just like you said. Everybody. And, needs, nor are every, they equally liable. Are equally. Everybody needs to be at the table. Absolutely. Yeah. But Africa don't owe us reparations. They owe us as a people internal reparations, mm -hmm. just like we owe ourselves as a people internal reparations. Here's what I want to say. Mm -hmm. We are entitled to reparations. We will get it. But let us be clear something. Money isn't going to fix many of the problems that we uh -huh. have. Mm -hmm. Money isn't going to stop the back and uh -huh. forth accusations and tearing down that's going on all over the internet between black men and black women. Money not going to stop that. Money ain't going to make the black man love the white woman anymore. You understand me? Money is not going to remove the self-hatred complex that so many African people have within us. There's so much that we have to do on our own that money cannot buy. So anybody who thinks that money is going to reverse the psychological holocaust is insane. It does has its place, but it is not a panacea for all of our problems. And I am of the opinion that if you don't change the way we Remember think that word, chat, from before we, we get reparations, the battle by, uh, if Kenneth you Burke. don't build an infrastructure Infrastructure for African people before we get reparations, you change nothing else about African people. Damn. Can we please talk about Jerry Jones? Yes, we can. You well, recently posted a picture. What? 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 They try to slander our brother over talk here. Talk to him. About what? Over the summer, I guess there was a, a video of you. I guess uh, oh, they tried to say you had, yeah, they, they tried to say you had jungle fever, Doctor Omar. Jungle fever in the mall. Okay, let me I tell you what happened. Doctor I thought Omar. we talked to him about that already. No, that Somebody tried to hack my phone, an iPhone. It went out. My phone never went out. I call iPhone. They say, okay, we have an appointment for you. I said, I'm in Philadelphia. Apple. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Apple. Mm -hmm. Closest place, Cherry Hill Mall Apple Store. No problem. I ain't got no phone. I need my phone. I go to Cherry That's Hill Mall. That's the whitest Apple of, of all Apple. Yes, sir. So I go to Cherry Hill Mall. They working on my phone. It's taking forever for my appointment to come up. I said, let me find something to do. I go get me some suits. Go back, get the phone fixed. I'm on my way out the mall. I'm done. I see a stand in the middle with incense, oils, crystals. I'm in all that. I said, okay, this must be a sister. Let me go over here. I'm looking through the incense. Young white lady come around. She said, can I help you? I said, this show stay? Because <laughs> I'm like, this, you know, because this was Only rare with the 15 stuff. months. You know I, I appreciated mean? my so jig. Like, she said, yes, my stand. She had a little foreign accent. I said, no problem. So I buy some incense. A brother stops by. Can I take a picture? Sure. I get a rock. Sister come by. Can I take a picture? Some more youth come by. Can I take a picture? The white girl start looking at me like, who are you? Like, why is everybody stopping asking you for a picture? I said, I'm Dr. Um. I'm a psychologist. She pulls out her phone. 
She said, well, let me see where you are. I said, go to YouTube, type in Umar Johnson Breakfast Club. That's exactly what I told you. <laughs> That's exactly what I told right. So she pulls out a photo. She go to Umar Johnson Breakfast Club. She said, that is you. I said, That's me. Some coons at a nearby restaurant are filming the whole thing. <laughs> but when they post it, they don't post the prelude to the conversation. Mm -hmm. If they would have showed everybody stopping, they would have knew she must have been curious about who he <laughs> yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They cut that off and they just showed me with her phone like I'm giving her my number. Can I get your number, baby? Blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. All I was doing was confirming. Frame who framed Roger who Rabbit, man. Don't you know they went up there and who interviewed Who framed Roger Rabbit, no. man? They interviewed her all week. The people that recorded you? Negroes from YouTube ran to the Cherry Hill Mall wow. and got a sat down with the snow bunny. Are you one of Dr. Umar's wives is what they were trying to figure <laughs> out. <laughs> Look, and she told the truth, though. And what I appreciate it. She said all he did was shop. I wanted to know who he was. Everybody was stopping to talk to him. He told me to pull out, go to YouTube, Breakfast Club, and uh, he was just confirmed. Hey, that Dr. was it. I, don't I know. picked up hey. my bag and walked off. They didn't even show me walk off. I don't think you realize how funny it is. That's like a Dr. Umar trap. We're going <laughs> to yes, set up the incense in the rocks, <laughs> but when he go over there, snow bunny. Yeah. <laughs> they got him, chat. Yeah. <laughs> they trapped him. Oh, it, it, it was He's crazy, the trap card. she was honest because she could have. She could have yeah, said he tried to get at me, you know what I mean? Right. So I think people think you hate white people. You don't, I don't hate, hate white, white people. people. Yeah. I have conversations with white folks all the time. Arabs, Chinese, East Indian. I have people who watch my work from all over the world. I, I was just stopped in the airport by an Asian who uh, works for, what do you call the security? Uh, TSA. 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 Mm -hmm. He came right over to me. I'm taking my shoes off. He said, hey, I'm a big, about 40-year-old Asian man. I'm not sure if he was Chinese or Japanese. But he said, I'm a big fan of your work. Keep on doing what you're doing. Asian. I had a group of white boys run up to me at the airport. I was in Dallas, Texas. Can we take a picture? I took the picture. Why do I do that? People say, why do you take pictures when white folks stop you? Because it's important for the world to know that my agenda is not hate. My agenda is African liberation. I'm opposed to white supremacy. I'm not opposed to white people. My priority is my own people, but I have nothing against yours. I'm unapologetically African. But the problem is historically, any black man who is unapologetically African, Malcolm, the Honorable Marcus Garvey, Stokely Carmichael, uh, Huey P. Newton, anybody who is that way, we will automatically brand it as anti-everybody else. That is not true. We are Africans. We are the original humanitarians of the planet Earth. We have never been against another people, but I am unapologetically committed to my own. So you and, don't and hate no, white people. You just don't I don't want, hate nobody. You want to see black people. I became a psychologist to help people, and in my work, I do work with all races, but my priority is my own because we need the, the most help. Charity starts at home, and so therefore, I make no apologies about being for black people. People. I make no apologies about saying a black man has no business being with Said another woman, Ime Udoka and TJ Holmes. I make no apologies <laughs> about that because we got to save ourselves. What's your thoughts on that? Since you since no, you let's go to Jerry. Let's stop you speeding now. <laughs> <laughs> let's go to Jerry Jones. <laughs> <own. laughs> and by the way, what, what, what Dr. Umar is saying, other communities say that and nobody has a nobody problem with it. Nobody says nothing. Yeah. Nobody says nothing. Okay. Ime Udoka and TJ Holmes. First of all, what they did was wrong. You had no business having relations with another man's wife if, in fact, those women were married. It's wrong. Husband, white, black, purple is wrong. Mm -hmm. Adultery is wrong. But it's even more wrong because you chose to go outside your community and do it. It's even more wrong because you chose to go into the white power structure and do it. They're, they were not chastised because I know they committed adultery. Thing. Celebrities do it all the time. They were not chastised for that. They were chastised for because they failed to keep in mind that white black men get the white women that other white men genuinely do not want. You don't get the top of the line white women. You don't. Failed to. I feel like I feel like this needs to be spoken of. For like it's, so, it's such a huge movement of everybody going all around the world. Trying to grab, oh, this this is this, and this is foreign, and this is that, and all this and all that. Keep in mind that white, black men get the white women that other white men genuinely do not want. You don't get the top of the line white women. You don't. You get left over. Like, that shit is weird as fuck when they, fed us, when they have a fetish with like, oh, I love black men. Like, blah, blah, blah. It's, that's much stronger feeling than a preference. That's like a, a weird, like... What's understood does not need to be explained, man. Look at most of our celebrities. They don't. They did not marry women who came from the richest white families. Black money and white money don't behave the same. 
New black mm. money and old white money have two totally different personalities. New black money will jump on any poor white girl and make her a billionaire, Tiger Woods. <laughs> rich white woman, rich white money doesn't operate that way, you see. The sin of Ime Udoka and the sin of TJ Holmes is you had an affair with a white man's wife. This is a desirable white woman. Somebody loves her and is married to her, and you had the audacity to take away from her husband being a Negro. That's why they had to be sat down. And if I could speak with Ime Udoka, I would Owner have to ask him. On top of all that, you chose a woman from the Mormon church. What's her family mean? is Mormon. The Mormons historically are one of the most racist denominations of the Christian religion. Did you know they did not ordain black ministers until 1978? Their most fav famous leader, Brigham Young, he said the devil was black and he also justified the enslavement of African people by way of the curse of Canaan. Ham was cursed for uncovering his father's uh, uh, nakedness and as a result of that uh, curse be the firstborn, Canaan. So the Mormon church and Brigham Young and their other leaders said that black people's skin was black and our hair was nappy because of the curse of Canaan and that justified our enslavement. You think he thought about it that deep or he was just probably hitting something? Yeah, I don't think he was thinking about it that but deep. But here's my point. If you're going to sleep with a white woman, you don't go to the KKK and get one. Mm. You see? Look at the other brother, uh, Everett, the young basketball player from Louisiana State University. June of this year, he visited his white girlfriend in Boise, Idaho. She takes him to a Mormon wedding. She should know better. They didn't let him in because he's black. Then he goes white water rafting with the snow bunny and three friends. They fall off the raft. Now, he's an athlete, six foot whatever. She's a white girl. She survives. He dies. Nobody looks for his body. It was a stranger who called the police and said he was missing. He turned up dead a couple days later. Another Mormon. Why did his parents let him go visit a white girl in Boise, Idaho? And why are you going to a Mormon wedding? And Ime Udoka, why are you sleeping with a Mormon woman? When you look at the history of the Mormon people, I'm not saying everyone, but structurally and systematically, they have been against black folks. Mm. So my goodness, Lacking. if you're going to do it, find Lacking a liberal bad. or something. You don't get a Mormon. Find a liberal. <laughs> that they did that. But they were wrong in what they were doing. But they're being yeah, punished they for find a liberal. They're being punished for being black men. Yeah, I think sleeping with, with white women. With T.J. Holmes, I think that they're about to demonize him in a real way. Like they even already put out a story that he was having multiple affairs. But they're that, going to get him. Yeah. You are not allowed to I touch the white women that white men have claimed or considered to be marriage worthy. You get the leftovers. Our athletes, our celebrities, they all got leftovers. They do not get top of the crop white girls. And Ime Udoka and TJ Holmes made a mistake of messing with women, white women who were untouchable, made untouchable by white males. So top of the crop white women is well, married uh, financial status or just women that are married? Bloodline. Okay. You have to come from one of them families with them names. It could also be financial as well. You follow what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But white men determine who those women are. And it's normally a mix of income, status, and bloodline, as well as occupation. You follow what mm -hmm. I'm saying? They're not poor. They don't come from poor means. They're not uh, first-generation millionaires. You understand? Mm -hmm. Black men don't generally get those women. And married white women are automatically included in that by virtue that they've been claimed by a white man. I want to ask you something, Dr. Muma. For you, have you ever seen an interracial relationship that was acceptable to you? No interracial relationship is acceptable because we have too many black women who are unmarried. Black women are the largest population on the planet Earth. If you can't find one in America, get it from Africa. If you can't get it from Africa, go to the Caribbean, go to Canada, go to Europe. Why would a black man need to copulate, build a family with anything other than a black woman when you have so many black women available? It is an exercise in self-hatred. There's no... For me, the way I look at this, bro, is like interracial shit is, is cool, but like it's like... I have to be with somebody that is relatable to me on on a real level. Like, like I told you, when I went to that high school I went to, and it was like a complete social economic foreign land. Like, it's just even though that joint was in Philly, so some of these people grew up around and blah blah blah. But it's like really like money around, really like classism and and like this whole like elitism kind of thing. And it's like. They be fucking with black people, but they they don't be relatable on on any real level. You can't sit there and talk to them and fuck with them and like it. They just wasn't relatable. It just it just it was like no cohesiveness in in the relationship there, and that's like a major turnoff for me. Like not being relatable, not being able to connect with you, and, and certain things just don't need to be explained. I feel like you know what I'm saying. Like because of how I grew up, you know that has impacted how I see the world and how I vision things. I don't just go in public settings and feel. 
uh, extremely safe and just let loose and just, oh my God, nothing can happen to me. Like, no, nah, I see the world a certain kind of way because of how I grew up. And, and and my woman has to know that she needs she know a little bit of scars you know what I'm saying she need a little bit of uh, experience she needs something she need to know be in the know like there's certain things that I don't feel like need to be explained no way to get around it do you think Kanye West if he had a black woman things would be different oh absolutely I think Kim Kardashian used him and the fact that they're making that man pay two hundred thousand dollars a month in child support when both he and the wife are billionaires are absolutely uh, ridiculous I think they want to break him. I think they want to break him. And although That's I don't crazy. agree with the way in which Kanye articulated some of his thoughts, I appreciate the fact that he was the first black man since Michael Jackson to speak truth to power, to specifically identify certain communities of Europeans who have exploited gangster rap, black entertainers, and other people since its bear, inception. The and nobody has called them out. He's the first to do it since Michael Jackson. But when Michael did it, yeah. he wasn't in his prime. Kanye did it in his prime. I can't give Kanye no respect because I've never seen a black man and seek more white validation than Kanye was. Well, that's the issue. That is, a, that that is, is one of the, the most issue. self hating black Kanye men on the is planet. not choosing a side. One day, it's about saving our people. The next day, you want to date with another snow bunny. One day, He's it's about helping the oppressed. Okay. The next yeah. day, you're campaigning for Donald Trump. One day, it's about being independent. The next day, I'm hearing about you going into business with some with uh, some white man. Make up your mind. I think Kanye is trying to f figure out where he is, but he got to make up his mind because you're too helter skelter. And at this point, I'm gonna be honest with you. Although I appreciate Kanye's honesty. I think most of his agenda is about Kanye. And I'm going yes. to say that because when I look at our black billionaire class, whether it's Kanye, whether it's Oprah, whether it's Jay-Z, whether it's anymore. Tyler Perry, even if he's no longer in that class, none of them, LeBron, Puffy, none of them have built an independent black institution for the black community anywhere in this country. Not one. How many lashes would Kanye get? Kanye would probably get... <laughs> I'm still working on Kanye lash count. Because I want to see where he ends up. Yeah, yeah. I need yeah. him to make up his mind and then stay there. Okay. And I need him to be a little bit more articulate with what he says. Lashes, because although he I think Kanye is on the right track, he's not articulating himself well enough. He's not controlling his public narrative. So when I do interviews like this or any interview, I go out of my way to be careful with my wording so nobody can try to use it against me later mm -hmm. you have to try to control your narrative and he will get on a mm -hmm. platform and say some things that he may not even believe just for the shock value and you're now giving the media the opportunity to brand you something oh my god people don't understand this bro niggas want to be so deep so woke so bad like oh you know you just don't understand like nah nigga he was literally yo that whole like nazi comment People jumped on that like, oh, no, he's practicing, you know, consistent, open love through, you know, like a Christian man should. Oh, my bad. I just, I, the timing is it funny? The, the timing of him mentioning Hitler and the Nazis isn't funny. Like now he wants to mention loving them. The timing didn't have anything to do with his war with, you know, the, you know what I'm saying? Like. Come on, bro. Like people, people wanted it to be deep so bad and wanted it to be holistic so bad that they didn't even realize he was trying to throw a stone. He was trying to like be be slickly shady. Like, oh, I, I love everybody. Come on, man. It was it was a shot. It was a slick shot. It wasn't. It was not no deeper than that. Like people wanted it to be deep so bad that you are not that's even I mean, worse to me though if you don't if you don't even have no real intention or you don't even know what the hell you're saying that's so anti-intellectual well the issue is kanye i think he's very brilliant but i also think he's dealing with some unaddressed mental health issues that is well. true that is true you said none of them have built institutions um, and, I, and i and i and i and i would not put him on the same level as a kyrie irving because i believe I kyrie is 100 percent genuine in his thinking i think he's very thought out and i think Kyrie does a good job of controlling his narrative. And I think that community that yeah, tried Kyrie to destroy him could be accused of being hypocritical because Jeff Bezos, the $139 billion owner of Amazon, has just issued a statement a few days ago. They're not removing the DVD. Oh, no, that wasn't There's, Jeff Bezos. That was the, other, that was the, uh, the current the CEO, CEO of, of Amazon. CEO. Okay, yeah. but Jeff Bezos is still the owner, isn't he? Uh, he's got a percentage in it, but it was the current, the, the person who made that statement was the current CEO of Okay, Amazon. current yeah. CEO, Jeff Bezos, whoever. 
Amazon is not pulling a DVD. They have not been uh, accused of being anti-Semitic. They have not been accused of being racist. They have not been accused of being a hate monger of any other people. So if if, if Kyrie can be accused of all that for sharing a video that he was not in, how is it that Amazon gets none of the smoke when they said they're not going to pull no, the video? Smoke. We no, had, we, yeah, let me get smoke. Jonathan, yeah. Jonathan Black was up. Uh, Jonathan Green Green Black. Black was here okay. uh, yesterday, and I asked him that same question. What he I said? said, and he said they have been giving him the smoke. They, they wrote him, the smoke they, they, they wrote him letters, the same thing they did. They wrote him a letter, but, but they, they tried to destroy Kyrie's career, not no damn letter. But they also said that it's illegal uh, in what state in Germany? In Germany, in so that's a country in Germany. The country to actually have that. I guess so in Germany because of the denazification of Germany. I forgot how he worded it. I think he was saying that the but Amazon is global. That's one country. Yeah, yeah, that's why. So because they can't sell it in Germany, it's acceptable. No, they don't want it up. Period. But they, but you know, they. But where is the media campaign by them to crucify Amazon the way they crucified Kanye? uh, Excuse me, Kyrie Kyrie. for sharing the video that That Amazon is is making millions. They should just play a clip of the guy trying to explain it. It's a dollars off. I I will say that's hypocritical. I will say this, Doctor Umar. I feel like sometimes we can't be we, selective moralists. I'm Charlemagne. with you, but I think sometimes we, as in pe- black mm-hmm. people on social media, make these stories bigger. Because if we wanted, like the Brett Favre situation, uh-huh. Amazon, if we talked about those situations, like we talk about other things, we would create those campaigns. But the white media made Kanye's, excuse me, Kyrie's situation an issue. So if you're going to make it an issue for Kyrie, white media, make it an issue for Amazon, white media. I mean, the white media did report on it when, when the ADL report. It didn't get the same energy. No, get the same I think energy. It did not get the I, same I, I energy. Really think it's a double standard. I think that's because of what we talk and, about. And anybody, really who, anybody who practices selective morality, whether you're European Jew, whether you're a revolutionary Pan-Africanist, whether you're a socialist, a Christian, a Muslim, a Hebrew, Selective morality is hypocrisy Because what I'm saying If envy does it, it's wrong And he should be punished If Charlemagne does it, it's okay Amazon is still selling it They have yet to be branded by the ADL Or anybody else that's anti-Semitic That's hypocrisy that, that's, what I, that's one of the questions it's hypocrisy. I, That's right. one of the questions I asked Jonathan Greenblatt I said, you know, it feels like um, when, when, when we do something there's consequences for yes. So I asked him, how do you punish that level of white privilege? How do you punish it, Donald They're Trump? They're not going to punish it. Because at the end of the day, white supremacy requires commitment and loyalty from all groups of white people. They may have their internal differences, but at the end of the day, they all agree that black people must be kept in their place. The Kyrie and Kanye issue was more about suppressing free speech for heterosexual black males than it was about anti-Semitism or anything like that. Look at Tiffany Cross. She said something on your show. Mm-hmm. They cut her. They made uh, Jalen Rose take back what he said about the fact the woman at the heart of the Ime Udoka scandal has never been exposed. She cheated on her husband. Why is Ime Udoka all over the media, but the white woman who cheated on her husband is not all over the media? It's a double standard, and we are not calling out the double standard. If wrong is wrong, it should be wrong. They're not mentioning that woman like she a victim, like she didn't choose to do what she did. For everybody, this is not about right or wrong. This is about suppressing the First Amendment freedom of speech rights of heterosexual black males who do not endure. And that inconsistency shit really disgusts in chat. Like, bro, I, I'm just finding out, you know what I'm saying, about the whole um, CEO of Amazon saying, well, we're, we're going to keep it up. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and I knew it was extreme, the lengths that they went through for Kyrie. Like, God damn. Like, bro, it was a whole list. And that was instantly and quickly publicized. And I'm just seeing this. I'm not even. I don't even try to pay too much attention to none of this shit. And I'm seeing this shit. I'm like, wait, what the fuck? Somebody, let me look, let me look for what he actually. Oh, it's an NBA player. Wasn't it? Wasn't it just shut up and poop? One second y'all want them to shut up and hoop. Next thing you know, next thing you know, you want them to be civil rights. Like, you want them to be like advocates of 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 like. Which one is it? And especially that, that you know, uh, email Udoka situation, like not mentioning the wife, like she was, a, it takes two to tango, you know what I'm saying? Like, what's going on here, gang? Because at the end of the day, guess what, chat? And this go for, this go for anybody. A woman going to be with who she want to be with. It's nothing you can do. It's, it's, it's she going to be with who she want to be with. So she wanted to mess with him, but she wanted to do all that. And he, he, he also was in a situation um, I don't know if he was married or not, and they saying something about T.J. Holmes, but 
it takes two to tango, man. It really does, man. So this whole bullshit of like, oh, all right, let's destroy him and his career. I'm like, like what, bro? It was the European narrative. No, I, yeah, that's what it's I'm about. I'm not against any of that you said. The only thing I push back on is, man, I do not like seeing people prop up Kanye West, bro. Because Kanye West is the most anti-black Negro out here. And I do not like when people just... Why do you buy, say that? Why do you say he's so anti-black? Look at him. Look at who he chooses to be with. And, and even when he had those billion-dollar companies... What was under the hood of those companies, Dr. Umar? Where was his black staff? I agree. Where was his black leadership? I agree. You know, where And that's why right now, as I just said a minute ago, I believe Kanye's agenda is what's best for Kanye. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's about what's best for black people until he shows me something else. Mm -hmm. I really believe he did what he did to get freed of them contracts because he has the brand and the platform and the status now where he could probably make his own sneakers and make his own music and probably sell as much, if not more, than I he did believe before. That, I believe You're giving so. that man way too much. No, credit. I believe so. I, I believe, believe so. Well, Kanye's well, big. Well, let me ask uh -huh. you. Almost, almost. He started selling. He started selling real bad. I believe that. Uh, Charlemagne's uh, football team, the Dallas you? Cowboys. Yes. And the owner, Jerry Jones. Listen to this. Here's another example of selective morality. How is it Brett Favre, and I'm coming to Jerry, mm -hmm. stole about $70 million of poor people's money from Mississippi to help his daughter's college build a volleyball field or something? It, it wasn't that much. Though. It was a lot. It, it was, was up there. Yeah, it was millions. It was millions. It wasn't seventy. It was, 70. It it was, was millions. in the doubles. It was millions. It was multi millions. Okay. It wasn't 70, yeah. Anyhow, he don't get indicted. He don't get charged. No charges are being brought against Brett Favre. If a black man did the same thing, you and I know he gets crucified. Mm -hmm. Look at the double standard and the select morality. Now let's come to Jerry Jones. This the same Jerry Jones who never hired a black coach. Same Jerry Jones during the Colin Kaepernick protest of 2016 said. If any of my players are caught, quote unquote, disrespecting the American flag by taking a knee, they not going to play on my team no more. This is that Jerry Jones who never stood up against any of the racism in the state of Texas. And he gets caught in the picture. September the 9th, 1957, mm -hmm. North Little Rock High School. And then he commits three lies. When asked about this picture, he was part of a mob to deny a group of African-Americans entry into North Little Rock High School. He says he was just there to be curious. He says neither he nor any of the other white boys or people there knew what they were going to get into. That's lie number one. Jerry Jones had already admitted that his coach told oh, him to not to go nowhere near yeah. that Damn. there would be trouble there. So how is it you didn't know what you was going into and nobody else there knew what you was going into when your coach told you it might be trouble and stay away from it? That was an absolute lie. And then when he was asked whether he regretted being there, he never answered the question. Where is Roger Goodell? Where's the NFL? Why isn't he being given a list of demands just like Kyrie was given, being given a list of demands? And check this out. To make matters worse, guess what else happened on September 9th, 1957, DJ Envy? What's that? President Dwight D. Eisenhower. Signs the 1957 Civil Rights Bill, creating the uh, Civil Rights Commission within the Department of Justice. First act of civil rights legislation since 1875. Jerry Jones and the rest of them kids, they knew that. They were there to repudiate that presidential signing. They were also there because what happened five days before that? What happened on September 4th, 1957? Was that the bombing? The Little Rock 10 yeah, the, tried yeah. to get into Central Rock, Central uh, High School, and Governor Forbes of Arkansas instructed the National Guard not to let them in. They were called the N-word, they were spit on, they were beat on, they were threatened, they were terrorized by white folks five days earlier. America's Jerry insane. Jones knew exactly what he was going to get into. The Supreme Court just outlawed school desegregation three years earlier on uh, May 17th, 1954. He knew exactly why he was going. He was going to stop uh, black people from coming into North Little Rock. Now Stephen A. Smith says, he, uh, Jerry Jones don't deserve this. He don't deserve to be held accountable for his part in supporting one of the most racist events in American history, which was the desegregation of America's schools. He shouldn't be held accountable. Stephen A. says, since this happened 65 years ago, he should get a pass. How because many lashes he was, for Stephen A. Smith? Stephen A. is probably up to 150,000 lashes right now for his <laughs> cooning. But listen, <laughs> if Jerry Jones get a pass because he's 14, why didn't Emmett Till get a pass? He was 14. Ty Mayor Rice. Ohio, he was 12. Where his pass at? What about the brother in Gulfport, Mississippi, two months ago? Jaheem, Jalen, I'm forgetting his name, shot in the head coming out of a dollar store with his hands up. 
Where was his past? Trayvon was 17. Where was his past? Look at all the young black boys who are tried as adults in America's prisons right now serving time in I'm adult prisons adult. under the age of 17. Where That's they pass adult. at, Stephen That's A? Disgusting. Why are we protecting privileged white men? And you know what makes it so sad? Jerry Jones don't even have to defend himself. He got that. black men yeah. who will jump up. Did you see Michael Irvin? This Uncle Remus? Michael Irvin says, oh, he wasn't at the front of the line. So because he wasn't at the front of the line, he less racist than the ones who's at the front. Oh, he don't look like the guy with the cigarette in his mouth. Jerry Jones is a righteous man and a great man. All white people were that way back in the day. This is Michael Irvin. All white people were that way back in the day. So we supposed to get Jerry Jones a path. There's nothing worse. How many lashes for Michael Irvin? Michael Irvin get about 5,000 lashes okay. for that. <laughs> no black man should ever volunteer himself, oh, Stephen A. Smith and Michael Irvin, to play defense attorney for a white man. Jerry Jones ain't thinking about black folks. He has yet to speak up on social district justice issues. He is a racist and he should be forced to sell the team. But it's not going to happen. Why? Because it would take the players of the NFL to protest to force him out. And we already see that our NFL athletes and our NBA athletes don't have enough courage. They're more concerned with money than they are about the movement. And that's why I'm disappointed in Deion Sanders. So, hold on one second. I, I don't service. think there's no defense. I know, I know. I don't think there's no defense for uh, Jerry Jones. And there's no whatsoever. defense for Stephen A. Smith and Michael Irvin defending him either. Let that white man speak for himself. And, and I, I like what y'all don't take up for black people like that. Stephen A., you threw Kyrie under the bus. Shannon Sharp, you threw Kyrie under the bus. But soon when a white man messed up, and Shannon didn't defend Jerry Jones, but Stephen did and Michael did, soon when a white man make a mistake, every every black man in sports media want to be defense attorney for white folks, but have no problem throwing black athletes under the right. bus. And, and I like what Jay Williams said that, you know. Jay, Shout out to Jay Williams. Yeah, Jerry Jones should be forced to denounce uh, anti black. Black racism, and he hasn't, and he race. should discuss this what he's learned over the past. He ain't learned nothing. He's a privileged white man. He just as racist um, now as he was then. See, well, this is a discussion around the inconsistencies and in, um, how what's being handled in the country and the way that it is being handled. Yes, you have those. You have an, a mentality where it's like, yo, like this shit needs to transcend race. Like we need to actually really look at life as it is and how it impacts all of us. Unfortunately, though, in a country like America, and this even happens all over the world as well, you know, discrimination or, you know, uh, bias against different complexions of that, of that such. But there's so much uh, racial history in a country like America. So much, so much. I mean, you even look at how, uh, you know, organizations like the Black Panther Party were infiltrated and, and dissected and destroyed. Um, just, you know, similar to mob as well. But how they were like just labeled and destroyed from the inside out by the government, the history of slavery, the history of you know all the injustices that, that take place and follow in this country, it's it's just a lot of stuff that slept under the rug and until it gets handled, until the elephant in the room gets addressed, people can't like not just talk about it. You know what I'm saying? Because what's going to happen is things like this. So I feel as though calling the elephant in the room and dealing with it as it is, is is very productive. You know, I, I, th I what I do not agree on is that we do not have the consistency and goals to handle it as a group. You know what I'm saying? Because then you'll have one black leader who will say something like, oh, man, race don't mean anything. You know, fuck it. And then you'll have one, you know, be like Dr. Umar, like race is like, man, what? How can you not see race when it wouldn't when you will be seen as your race? And that's why I lean towards that more side of the argument, because at any given level, um, whether it's classism or elitism, and you, you go up in any hierarchy, you are looked at as a black man. Right. Like there are so there's so much levels to wealth. There's so much levels to uh, class and, and, you know, just the elitism of society in general. And yes, you can obtain the materialistic part. But at the end of the day, on a, on a normal and natural scale, when we look at things like, you know, people who don't get certain jobs or having certain names, when we look at uh, shit that takes people's lives, we got we to gotta protect the masses. And there's truly just a lack of leadership. And, and with that lack of leadership, opportunity, opportunists always come in and vulture the shit out of things. For example, Black Lives Matter. I didn't intend none, none of those fucking protests. I didn't intend none of those protests. I did not go to a single one of those protests. I knew from from the rip. I'm like, look at this hype. Problems I had been 
working towards system systemically solving and, and incorporating solutions to such as getting minority students into the honors college such as tutoring minority students who were early in the college and struggling with school on a small scale that i could i, I already was dedicating my life to this shit. here comes covid here comes quarantine and all that and people feel so rah 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 motivated and act like they know some shit. and it's like on top of that you go look into who was running blm and taking the donations they buying cribs they live in lavish. I'm like, yo, what the fuck? And, and you know, crazy part is people will throw it at you. Oh, you didn't attend a, a protest? It's like, bro, what have you done yourself before this or after this? What are you doing every day to contribute to to um, handling and contributing towards leadership? You know what I'm saying? Like, people don't, people, people, I hate that shit, man. I, I hated that, how people just wanted to jump and become fake woke. Like, this shit irked me so bad. Listen. I've been studying psychology my whole life. I got a doctorate in it. I got three master's degrees in it. I got two certifications in it. You know what they tell you in psychology? That? that the human personality is largely fixed by the age of five. 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 Jerry Jones was 14. If you're going to tell me that Jerry Jones is fundamentally a different person now at 80 than he was at 14, let me know what major critical life experiences Jerry Jones went through that transformed the way that he thinks. Nothing at all. People saying, well, we got to give him credit. Dak Prescott talking about, look at his resume since then. Look at his resume since then, Dak Prescott. He ain't done nothing to help black folks, and Jerry Jones ain't thinking about helping black folks. Well, I, I, I don't like when people say because he didn't hire a black coach, because just because he hired a black coach don't mean anything. I do agree, but at least it shows you are at least concerned about how racism looks on your resume. Jerry Jones is not even concerned about how racism looks on his resume. How many lashes should Charlamagne get for being a Cowboy fan still? I like football. Charlamagne. You're an Eagle fan. You like e Eagles. Nah, I'm not watching no football, no NBA no more. I'm done. What? I'm officially done, brother. We cannot be for the black liberation struggle and support white corporations and systems that systematically practice and defend white privilege and white racism against black people. What about all Think about this, though. And then he'll probably say that track record statement based on like, oh, he's hired black players. Okay, if a player... Name one of the contracts that a Cowboys player have. And they, just name one of the contracts. I don't watch sports that much. I know y'all know something. Just name a contract, right? I'm going to make a point here. And we could even attribute this to Twitch in the discussion that... Um, uh, it was a discussion that... Um, I'm going to say name a player. I said name a contract. Name a contract. Like how much they're paid. Um, but it was a discussion that uh, a streamer was having with Kai Sinat and Aiden and he was talking about like these streamers are protected and they make train wrecks right he was like these streamers are protected and they make this much and you pull in more views and more numbers Dak four years 160 million right do you know how much money you have to have to pay him 160 million like like if his cut is 160 million do you know how much he makes them or has made them that 160 million is a bag but you know the the slight you don't know how you don't know how thin or how thick that piece of pie is. You don't know. That's like rappers being like, "Oh, I got signed." You know, such as my advance was a mil, and my advance was this or that. Do you know how much you made these people? Shit! If if you make me a billion dollars or or ten billion dollars or two billion, three billion, and I give you a hundred and sixty million. I'm telling you, and you don't see so you don't consider these things until you look at somebody like Bad Bunny, right? He getting he getting I think his shit like 90 10 split profit he getting and on his masters and and ticket sales and merch and all this. What? Oh look at his track record. Bro, you don't even know what's right. 160 in four years. That's 40 million a year, right? Let's not let's not do the math of the size of the stadium, average ticket price, merch, food bar like bro, listen, I'm telling you, sponsorships from these companies, the Super Bowl ads. How much do they say people pay for those Super Bowl ads? Probably more money. They probably pay more money than in those ads than one than some of the players' salaries. They pay. They get paid 
They get paid more money for those ads than some players' salaries. And we want to talk about, oh, you know, look at his track record. He's cutting this guy 160 mil. Do you know how much he made him, though? Come on. And that's why people really be spitting when they make these conversations of, well, if the most popular five athletes left and did this, that shit would really impact it. Yes, it would. But people don't know how to strike. People don't know how to really, like, commit to shit. Um, and, I, and we're going to look at this Deion Sanders thing. We're going to look at that. We're going we're gonna to see where this, where this discussion goes and that debate goes. Because because I'm really like pro Dion in so many ways. Just the records that he set, the swagger that he wears. I represent his brand. He's about family and, you know, works on improving his children. A lot of the people's lives he's impact and influence. You know what I'm saying? So we're going to see what that discussion goes. I don't know too much about about everything with that. They just there to get it back. They're not protesting. They're not doing nothing. They're not doing nothing. Some of those brothers protest. (laughs) Okay. Okay. Show me a rich athlete who built a relevant independent black institution in this country. Give me one. And let me tell you what they are. Independent okay. school. Don't give me no charter school. Charter okay. school is a public school. So don't give LeBron, me no charter LeBron school. James in the school he built? That LeBron is a speak, public school. It, is, but, but it LeBron, has his name on it. But you know LeBron speaks up for black issues. I didn't ask you about speaking. Let me go mm-hmm. back to my question. Mm-hmm. My question was, name me a black celebrity or entertainer who has built a relevant, independent black institution. But is that, school. I the, agree. The but bank. But is that the supermarket? That's the one, hospital. That's all that Manufacturing. Distribu- it's the heart of a community. The key word right there is independent. Charlemagne, take care of the major problems we got. Just because LeBron James got in front of a microphone and, and, and undid what he did a few weeks ago. And I want to give LeBron some props. I appreciated his comments about Jerry Jones and comparing that to the way in which they tried to uh, castrate Kyrie. Shout out to LeBron. But now LeBron, don't pull a Shannon Sharp and a Stephen A. And right after you do something positive or say something good, you take it back by going right back to the Django character. You understand? He got the... You know what's getting out of hand now? Which is letting you know that... Um, uh. Like that, that, that volcano is kind of like simmering up again. So many of these positions, so many of these entertainers um, and these people that keep, for the most part, chat, let's just speak blatantly. Keep people distracted. I, I, listen, as an influencer, as, as an influencer, as a social media content creator, right? When I make these entertaining videos, these e dates and all that, distraction. I'm not going to say to keep myself out of this conversation, right? If everything is not contributing towards some type of knowledge or education, distraction, right? We we must enjoy our entertainment, just like music. So I'm not I'm not saying that this doesn't have value in the culture. My point is that these like these mass forms of media, which were just meant to be like distractions, entertainment for the for the public are now becoming like debate spaces but they're not even debate spaces if y'all notice they are get your favorite person to say something which will which will tell you or influence on what you think or your opinion because and i took a political class on public opinion and they talked a lot about this there's so much cognitive dissonance especially when it comes to role models or famous people and cognitive dissonance meaning, like, if you if you fuck with me and it came out that I smacked a three-year-old child, if you fuck with me enough, the first thing you want to do is say that's cap. Ty would never do that. And if you hate me enough, you immediately go and say, I knew, he, I knew something was wrong with him. Even if it gets proved wrong, you're still going to be like, still something off of him. Because you're, you're kind of dissonant. You just will never... It's why a lot of people got caught into conspiracy theories, and no matter which way you argue, they're just talking to a brick wall. That's cognitive dissonance, right? I say that to say, they take somebody like Shannon Sharp. You might have loved him your whole life. You might have been in sports your whole life. Your family loves sports. Y'all watching y'all bond together on that. Not a really serious thing, but it's meaning has meaning to your family. Now he's talking about what Kyrie Irving should have done, and an issue that's bigger than sports. And that's why I said, like, this volcano really is erupting because, or, like, not erupted yet, but it's really simmering up. The smoke is coming out the volcano because these these medias, these platforms, which are just about entertaining, let's talk about stats, sports, and, and the new news or whatever, whatever, 
Now they're becoming like political forums. Now they're becoming like uh, moral advocates. And this person shouldn't have did this. They're wrong. This person should. Like, has sports ever really been this involved in like public matters and affairs over the past 20, 30 years? No. They tried to keep entertainment, entertainment. And then they tried to keep, you know, political shit, political shit. Now it's like every time something happened, we need we need this player to make a statement. We need this uh, speaker to make a statement. We need all this to make a statement. And a lot of these people, death before dishonor, a lot of these people have a price. And the price is not even just money. It could be it could be blackmail. It could be damn. We was at that party one time. And you saw me get super drunk and I, and I, you know, whatever. It, it ain't always just money. I'm not going to sit there and say that. These motherfuckers be having demons in their closet or shit that they hiding. Fingers crossed behind the back with each other. Oh, don't you dare get out of line right there. So it's not always just money. Money is one thing. A lot of people, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, like this, it's just a lot going on right now. And a lot of motherfuckers is getting exposed, right? He, he kissed a man over here. You know, affair with his wife with a with guy like all this. I'm telling you, and it ain't just the homosexuality thing, but it's just so many forms that people of high in secrets that they know better. They know better. Then I start back to pedaling and backtracking. I'm telling you, man. So it was like you know, it went from just shut up and play to all right. Now you need to speak on this. Now you need to take a stance. Why? Because it's, it's this whole attack on freedom of speech. It's this whole attack on, um, you know, like like influence and control, the fight for control. If they can't control social media, they can at least try to control the people who influence social media or influence the masses. Because they lost control of like we are our generation. We don't watch the news. We don't read uh, newspapers. We go on Instagram. We go on TikTok. At least we still fuck with athletes and shit like that. We don't we don't watch CNN and all that shit. I mean, some of you some of you in here might be like, "Oh, I watch the news all the time." Dog, it's coming out that people use TikTok more than Google. TikTok more than Google. They're not gonna let this shit slide. They're gonna jump right in here and say, "All right, what we what can we do?" And these influencers, guess what? You might have fucked with this influencer because all they did was do five simple dances. All this influencer ever wanted to do was to be famous and get money. Simple ambitions in life. They never wanted to be a social justice advocate, civil rights. They didn't. They don't care. Which is, that's them. The next thing you know, they've got some bread on the table. These companies think way ahead of them. See, the, these companies see the chessboard. These influencers don't even realize they're a pawn. They're a pawn in a game they could have made a difference in. And as long as they choose to be a pawn and they submit, they had a price, they buy out. They don't even see the board. They don't even see it. To be consistent. Speech is not enough it's when crazy, you're worth bro. billions. To whom much is given in thee, much is expected. If you a billionaire talking, so how, talking? So how can y'all co-sign Kanye so much? He don't do that. Kanye All does not fall back into the black people. Kanye group. spoke a significant truth to a significant white power. But he don't pull back into black, black people. I agree. I just LeBron said that. have infrastructures full of black people making I'm going to ask you again. What institution... That's relevant has been because yeah, because because Charlemagne is so he's so anti Kanye he can't even stay on topic with the conversation like he like like swapped it around so instead of answering the direct question it went to well damn how you gonna coach on Kanye well because Kanye spoke out against something or a matter or a topic which was it which had greater severity than. You know, defending or co-signing LeBron or an institution. It, it just like completely went back to the what he was built by a black athlete or celebrity this century. I need an answer. But you just mean school banking and relevant. Academia. Okay. LeBron James started a uh movement against voter disenfranchisement. Walk through the streets of Brooklyn, walk through the streets of Harlem, walk through the streets of the Bronx, walk through the streets of Queens, walk through the streets of Staten Island, and ask black people, what are the top five problems black people have in America? I promise you, voter suppression ain't one. <laughs> voter suppression right. ain't one. Come on, y'all. 
If we want to solve Sir, our Eric problems, we got to get serious. And black athletes have been cooning for far too long. I know, I know, I know you being hard on They're more concerned brothers, about money I, I know than gotta, making a difference. I, I know we got to go. But Deion Sanders, you were talking about Deion Sanders. Uh-huh. Dion. What's your thoughts on Deion Everybody Sanders? been texting me about this all week. Talk to me about Deion, Dr. Uma. Mind you, before you get into it, you know, Charlemagne gave Donkey today to people that were criticizing. I know. That's right. Dion. And I'm coming right at it. Let's, Let's go. Let's go. Spin, I appreciate I'm coming the right at it. Right I'm coming the right at it. More lashes. When Deion Sanders stood against Colin Kaepernick's protest in 16, I branded him a Negro pen. He did? Yes, he did. He said he did. He sh I saw him say it out of his mouth on an interview. Mm. He said he should not have taken that knee. It was wrong. Mm. Deion Sanders. Mm. I put him in the Negro peeing camp because he didn't stand with Colin Kaepernick. When I heard Deion Sanders was taking the job, I said, OK, I'm going to give him his black pass back mm. because here you are. One of the top five greatest athletes, arguably the greatest football player ever. Including Tom Brady. Dion could go down as greater than. You go to Jackson State, HBCU. Mm -hmm. That's impressive. Now I hear all of a sudden you might be leaving. Well, so he's, he's leaving. Oh, he's, he's going. Oh, he's going. Stay with me. Mm -hmm. He's wrong. But I have two levels of wrong. Mm -hmm. I got a low level and I got a high. I'll explain them to you quickly. My low level. If Dion told the administration and the students and the players at Jackson State that I'm taking this job, but I need y'all to know, if something better comes along, as soon as it comes along, I may be leaving. He did say he, that. He said that. If he was that transparent, I didn't see that. I, I played the clip the other day. He, he said, said it on it. 60 Minutes. He said that. Um, no, he said he may be leaving. He did not say he was leaving after three years. No, he said that he if said a Power 5 school, five school comes office, along, yes. uh -huh. I have to entertain it. I would be a fool not to. And Dion has That's always not been the same. No, Dion has always been transparent and open about what his goals were. That is not. No, I disagree with you. He told them if it comes his way, he would have to entertain it. He never said I would leave you that soon. He never said I can be gone in three years. What does it matter though? His contract was I'm gonna tell before. you why it matters. I'm about to tell you right now okay. why it matters. Because he damn wrong. Now, if he told them if I'm gonna go back and study I feel like Dion only thinking about football. Like I feel like this is also one of those situations where again, chess chess board being analyzed. Um he's not seeing he not don't even care about the board, he's just making the moves that he wants to move for, you know, his reasons and his world. That he sees. You know what I'm saying? Some more. But from what I seen him say. Who cares what Dion does? I already know the argument he's about to make is that potential impact should have been considered. He was not that direct. But Definitely if he was, was, if he was, mm -hmm. and that's not what I saw, so I, we disagree there. But if he was, he's still wrong, but it's a low level because at least you was transparent and you gave him informed consent. Mm -hmm. They knew you could leave at any time. That's right. right. Okay? Still wrong. I'm going to explain in a minute. Now, if he didn't tell them that, okay, and I'm hearing from people who know athletes on that team that they were not told it that way. They weren't listening. And they're upset. Because he said that on 60 Minutes. Okay? He didn't say it that way, Charlamagne. I yes, saw he that. Did. He That's did an not. Exact no, quote. he didn't. Exactly. Yeah, if he did not do it that way, that automatically means that Deion Sanders used, abused, and exploited HBCU Jackson State just to be given an opportunity to show predominantly white institutions that he could coach. If he only used them as a stepping stone to getting a job at a white college, he was dead wrong. This is the thing, though. Um, this is where you have to see the, the, the frames and the lens that each person is attached to. See, Dr. Moore is heavy, heavy, heavy on you know racial identity. And, you know, that's the social construct of race. And, you know, this group and this group class and that. So... He's jumping straight to the frame of like, okay, use this or use that for these reasons. Because that's his viewpoint. That's his way of analyzing the situation. In Dion's world, Dion may have just said that, okay, I want to get hired and coach. Maybe his goal is, I don't know. I don't know the whole situation, but I, I would assume it was coach for an NFL team. And, and in coaching for an NFL team, there's usually like a process to it. You coach for high school, do well. They, they hire you out of college. Um, you, co you coach at that college, you do well, they hire you at a, um, a bigger school, a school with more to lose, a school with a bigger budget, a school with more money, etc. Um, so he, I, I feel like in Dion's world, Dion is just thinking about coaching for an NFL team, and he sees the love of the sport. 
and he sees the influence on the youth and the young players, which he saw in himself because he was in their position coming up and making it to the NFL. So I don't, I don't feel like in Dion's world, it's a bit more to it. I'm saying in Dion's world. I'm just saying. He's saying he didn't want to coach in the NFL. So yeah, maybe he just wanted to be a big college coach. You know what I'm saying? Um, and in, in Dr. Umar's perspective and his lens, seeing it as though he wanted to, he wanted it to be an effective power play, which will impact the masses of black people. That's where his lens is going to take it. It's this could this same discussion could have been discussed on a um, sports podcast of coaching, and they would have been like. Shout out to Dion, man. Dion's doing great for himself, man. He he went and, sh- and showed his worth as a coach at, at uh, JSU or, you know, Jackson. Yeah, I think it's Jackson State. He went and showed his worth as a coach. Now, a bigger university gave him an opportunity, man. Shout out to Dion, man. He's making more money. He's da 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 So, but that frame of reference might have been success as a college coach, all coming from a high school coach. You see what I'm saying? And he's also involved in students' lives and his son's lives, etc. So it depends on what frame of reference you really want to take it to, to really see this as. Now let me tell what you. level this issue really is applied to. Why this is bigger than football. Mm-hmm. What case is the Supreme Court reviewing right now? Yeah, right now, the, su- the case su- against uh, a, uh, black, what is it, for black students in colleges? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. The U.S. Supreme Court right now is reviewing whether or not racially conscious admissions Mm -hmm. in higher education are unconstitutional. And guess who is bringing the suit? Asians. But guess who's funding the suit? White people with connections to the six conservative justices on the United States Supreme Court bench. So. Well, that shit's wraps. What they're saying is Asians are discriminated against on the basis of the personality aspect of the admissions process at Harvard and the University of North Carolina, among other universities, by subjecting Asians to that personality assessment, which includes personality, background, social economic status, culture, this, that, who you are, what you want to be. Asians are being penalized for the high test scores and grades. So what the Asians want and what the white folks who are funding the Asians want is they want the Supreme Court to say you cannot include race at all as a factor in higher education admissions. If they Mm -hmm. throw that out, if they say Harvard cannot use the personality assessment portion of the admissions process, the percentage of Asians that get accepted into PWIs goes up by 20 percent and the percentage of black students will plummet by at least 50 percent. You know what that means? You are watching the gentrification of black children off of the PWI campus. How is this relevant to Deion Sanders? The reason I'm so personally disappointed in Deion is I thought he was there for a movement, not for money. Meaning, Deion Sanders, the coach of Jackson State. And again, that might have been due to Dr. Umar's lens, seeing is that like, he's thinking movement, 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 cultural impact. And the advancement of black people. I foresaw a situation where Dion would hire other coaches, other retired black NFL greats to coach other HBCUs. In doing so, you attract our top tier high school athletes to come to Maybe. HBCU. Maybe. Stay with me. Eddie Jordan, Foot, that's stay State. with me. Stay with me. Football and back. You know like I know if you got top tier NFL greats coaching HBCUs, the athletes are coming Maybe. just like they was coming for Dion. He showed you, Charlie. Dion, though. He showed Dr. you. Umar. And his other was Dion just as one great. Of the most famous people ever. And his other was just as great. So listen. Eddie George at Tennessee State. That's one person. We're talking about a system, not an individual. So Dion and these other coaches bring all these athletes from high school to play football, basketball, so forth. The revenue of the HBCU goes up, Envy. As a result of the revenue going up, Charlemagne, the school's got more money. They don't have to subject themselves to closure. They don't have to subject themselves to being dependent on white money. This is the thing I will comment on here as just an objective standpoint overall. You do see in any given circumstance and setting, uh, especially in other ethnic groups, that when that ethnic group has an advantage in some way, shape, or form that they look out for each other. Money is kept in other communities longer. Number two, um, opportunities being given. Oh, you know, uh, my dad owns this place. We, we, you know, you look at the front desk, they're hiring people that are their little cousins, their, their nephews, their nieces. You see what I'm saying? 
or you know you, you they look out for each other much more so i will i will give that credit to that part of this you know this the debate and discussion do i think that eat that dion should have been the messiah here quite frankly if if that was really his aim he could have been if he was if that was his real aim and he was determined to quite frankly i feel as though he 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 could have been, and it could have had a bigger impact than he, than he would have. You know what I'm saying? Or who knows? Who knows what Dion has planned? Who knows what Dion has in his mind? I'm not lab I'm not putting that on him or any way. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I will say that in situations like this, when it when it is a black man who has the power, or it, fuck a, fuck a black man, if it is any ethnicity who has the position to say, okay, come in, or I'm gonna give you this position or this role. It always, all, all ethnicities look out for each other. We cannot say we don't. And I know a lot of people in here are, are from different countries right now or from, of different ethnicities. You know what I'm saying? But on a, on the level of looking at race as a social construct, a lot of the times ethnicities look out for each other when they have a position of power or a position to say, oh, come on, I'm going to hire another, you know, Latino. I'm going to hire another Hispanic. I'm going to hire another black person. I'm going to hire another white guy. I'm going to hire another woman. If it, it, it even can go to the gender. I'm going to hire another, you know, et cetera. You see what I'm saying? It, it's just how things go. So I think that's his best argument in the Dion situation is that uh, Dion was really holding the ball here. And by switching from HBCUs to PWIs, they're not underfunded in any way, shape, or form. You could have gave them a lot more prestige and uh, desire to play for those schools. Because guess what? That's another thing. Majority of these athletes on these teams... We know what ethnicity they are. Let's talk about it. We know what ethnicity majority of these athletes are, especially when they're famous, especially when they have big names and big brands. For example, it's like me, and I'm not even huge, but it's like it's like me being huge, and I go buy a bunch of Louis Vuitton and Gucci. Do they sponsor me? Do they partner me? Or could I even have made a brand, a designer brand, with my last name, which probably doesn't even come from my origin. I probably have a, a last name from some connecting connecting thing to, to 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 slavery, and I could represent that brand and push that brand. Except I'm pushing all this other consumer and shit, which is not feeding my children's children, but their children's children is being fed off of this. You see what I'm saying? And that's just the world we live in. I do not like the narrow things under the spectrum of race. I do not like to just, you know, live and see world as, as finite as that, right? But I just say that it's worth looking at how, you know, the power structure, what you can do with your influence, with your uh, advantageous position. Money. You got HBCUs at risk of being close. For your community. And that could be of any community because guess what? You could you could be black and you could have been born in France. You could be black and you could have been born in uh, you know, whatever. So the community, I don't think it's just come down to ethnic ethnic group or 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 you know what i'm saying i read something that said almost a half of them a half may not survive the decade so this was bigger than football this was about the survival of the hbcu it's bigger than Dion, especially though, Duma. no yes, no it is. I think no stop trying you bl to you're blaming an individual no you're bl stop trying to give celebrities no, a pass no, charlamagne no, you're blaming an individual i'm not blaming about him the issue. i'm blaming black men for not being men but you know what that, i'm blaming us listen. for not being men that was an can, unmanly can, move can you admit one thing Dion could have went down uh, in history are H, brother are hbcus chronically underfunded of course. Were they chronically underfunded before Dion? Yes. Yes. Were they be chronically underfunded after Dion? Yes. Absolutely. What are those reasons that they're chronically underfunded? We don't because be we as black men have not come together to create the funding source to make sure they survive. I don't want to hear about the government. We have too no, many that's, wealthy that's, blacks. Exactly. Y'all interview them every I, I, listen, day. I'm with you. So, so you got you got low uh don do, low donor low alumni donors low lo, alumni donors okay right, right? Okay. low endowments correct that's a us problem. He part of us. Why you keep exempting celebrities? He's one They're not better than us. He's one person. Okay, but the point is that one man could have been a catalyst for a movement that would have revolutionized the what? survival but of... Keyword is catalyst. Keyword there is catalyst. You know what I'm saying? Being as though I, I have a background in cellular molecular biology, I love that word, but in reality, that just means that he could have like made it easier. He could have served the role 
of making that transition easier or the movement easier or the um, spark of it easier. You see what I'm saying? So, and that's, that's, I don't think that's debatable. Like, I, like, even if you're not even looking at the, through a, a, a lens of race, he could have, Deion Sanders had the potential. And he already did just by going to JSU, but because a lot of five star players went there, et cetera. He had the potential to say, okay, let's put some money towards HBCUs. Let's, let's get these schools having some respect that they deserve, or, you know, let's, let's revive them, these historically black colleges and universities. I don't, that's that's like un, that's like there's no debate in that you know what i'm saying HBCUs. But why, why did the movement stop just because he left hbcu's gonna you're still be missing here. the point no HBCU's the abolition gonna still wasn't be here. just about frederick douglas but if frederick douglas would have pulled out it would have hurt it the underground railroad wasn't just about harriet but if she would have pulled out it would have failed so what was the, the civil HBCU rights movement, movement wasn't just Dion. about king before Dion three years ago what was they the were struggling movement? and he could have helped save it and for him to pull out of Jackson State, the like we all know how huge it was when Dion went to Jackson State, and like they even say, like he took a lower cut in his salary to put it towards like, you know, the buildings, and you know he made other players with top talent want to play for these schools. Because guess what, chat, like these, this the the talent from these schools, bro, is the reason that they have the funding that they have. It all comes down to that. Who are these players with these big names that that win games consistently? And obviously, you know, it, one ben the other hand starts benefiting the other hand. So as more and more good players come here, they get more funding, they win more games, they win more championships, they get more fans, they get a bigger hype and wave behind them. More students come in. It, it's it's just like a it's it's a double edged sword, but in like a beneficial way. So I say that to say, um, like they, they for the most part. College players weren't even getting compensated for this. That's like a recent thing where college players starting to make money from these contributions and this cultural hype that they build. For example, it'd be like Nelly, 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 and all that popularizing the the uh, Nike Air Force Ones. Brazy sign. I appreciate the T One stuff for eighteen months, and you got the new sub badge. But it's like uh, Nelly popularizing the Air Force Ones, and ain't get and you know they bumped the price in the Air Force Ones. And he talking about fast forward. Well, I ain't getting no cut of that. And then you look at that. It's only two years old college players can get money with their name. A lot of these players come out of high school with fucking 500,000 Instagram followers. I don't give a fuck. We talking about basketball or football at this point. Like, like they impact the, the hype behind these schools. You know what I'm saying? And, and on the chessboard... Is the moves, are they benefiting the, the best ways they can? In my opinion, no. They're getting they're getting slivers of pieces of pie when they are one of the main ingredients. Let's be real. They are getting slivers of the pieces of pie. And that is the finesse. That is the finesse of this whole college shit to me. Because guess what? That's why they finesse all these students. Oh, let's go to this big name university for connections and, and, and whatever, but in reality, these students could have take could have could have taken their same intelligence, could have taken their same work ethic anywhere. They didn't even have to go to school, and contributed this again debatable, debatable, and could have still contributed it to the world. But when they leave these schools, next thing you know, they give money back to them. Because, again, these schools play a part. The environments that they get put into when they go to these schools. I will add to that my high school influenced, you know, the, the trajectory of my success. So I know how a, a, the right environment and the right school can contribute to that. But when you look at the culture, like, it's really like, it, 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 it's, it's the same thing. It's like if a smart student come to this school and start making more smart people come here. And the next thing you know, there's this culture of smart people. I don't know if it's making sense, chat. But I feel like bottom line is the athletes do not benefit as much as they should, and the the count like the the fucking all the credit is given to the institution. 
way that he did it before making sure That's what the HPC like, system survived. To, to me, was selfish. He chose money over the movement, Charlemagne, and celebrities do it all the time. And y'all want to give him a pass? Nobody get that's no some, pass. I, I, that's, that's I don't care who Deion Sanders is. He had a chance to help, and he hurt. And y'all want to condone that because you black celebrities are not committed to the best interests of black. Well, people. Let me ask you a question. When, let me ask you a question. When Dion was coaching high school kids for several years, uh -huh. you know. When he we was ain't talking about no, that. Listen, 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 we're talking listen, about no, survival listen, listen, of listen, listen, HBCU. Listen, listen. Me, I'm gonna get there. When he was coaching high school kids for several years, you know, black kids, when he was opening up Prime Prep Academy that got closed down because they had financial issues. When he went to Jackson State for one point two million dollars for four years and said, you know what? Y'all take even stay for four years. Well listen, y'all take half this salary and go and go build a better uh -huh. relax, go build a better uh -huh. facility for students. Uh -huh. And he gotta pay yep. back three hundred thousand dollars. And after all that, I'm still gonna leave Jackson State for a super white College who that got a 1.6 black student. But you mean let me finish my point. Rate no, how, how no, you, wait. How can you say 1.6 black students, which means the only blacks on that campus are the athletes, and you're going to tell me that that's a step up? You sold us out for money, bro. How can you say it's about money when you he's he, show, when his track record shows he stayed he don't for three years? That was money. no commitment. His track record shows that if white people give me the money, I'll turn my back on the HBCU system. Hey, what are you talking about? That's what he did. I disagree. That's what he just did. I he took he took the highest paying job. You know what I'm saying? Now, whichever way you look at this contributed to that problem or this added to that or took away from that, you know that's that's the free spectrum. But he took the highest paying job. I mean, in my opinion, what, was Deion Sanders hurting for money? I don't think so. Like you know what I'm saying? Clearly, he wasn't. If he was to take to split his salary and have and contribute it back to the school, right? But this is the, this is the whole thing with morals, and people say, does everybody have a price? Come on! 1.2 million wasn't enough for him to really be like, all right, you know, fuck it. Like, I'm, you know, y'all school need this. Man, I, I, if he would have stayed disagree. there, if, if Dion would have stayed there, like I said, he could have brought other black coaches in, former NFL greats, that would have raised the revenue of the HBCU, which is so critical now. Why? Because the Asians are being financed by white folks to kick what little blacks are left on the PWI campus off. So that means the critical importance of the HBCU is greater now than it's ever been. So for Dion to pull this right now makes it even worse because you're leaving the HBCU system when so, you had a chance so how many to say, lashes for stop trying to exempt black celebrities not, from accountability no, to the race. No, gotta, what, celebrities what, what, are not above accountability. Stop, I Charlamagne. Agree, so how many stop. lashes? How many lashes for Dion? Fifty thousand lashes for Dion. Now, more, no, 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 no. Shut up, shut up. More important question: How much you? Oh, oh, no, no, oh. no, no, no. How much you gonna donate to an HBCU today? I'm building two independent schools, the first in his history. No doubt, but those are HBCUs. Whoa, 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 whoa. Say, whoa, whoa, whoa. No, no, if you're going to be that no, no, passionate no, no, about no, no, HBCUs, no, 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 no. how much no, 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 you going to donate no, no, no. to an HBCU today? Let me today? answer your question. May I? Yes. First of all, I'm not a multi-millionaire. Second of all, <laughs> Why you gotta be a multi can I finish my donate? question? Can I finish my question? I donate to HBCUs on a regular basis. Okay. See, the, 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 I see what Charlamagne just tried to do there. But, like, are we going to compare Deion Sanders to Dr. Umar? <laughs> I mean, I like it was a, and, it, and it was a dumb statement because it. I, I mean, I like it was it was like a weak jab. Do you know why? Because it was like assuming he doesn't. He's a hypocrite. It was like assuming like he doesn't do anything. Again, I, I you know, I, a lot of people do this though. Chat, they got a lot to say, but not they don't do a lot. So it'd be like me saying, oh, man, these content creators just distract kids all day. And you go to my channel and there's no value present. It's all clickbait. It's all fluff and it's all views and money. And I want money, money, money and greed. I'm throwing stones in a glass house, essentially. So I guess he just tried to, you know, see. All right, so what are you doing? Like, bro. You talking to Dr. Umar, like if anybody is the top advocate of top anything, you know what I'm saying? And you can't even compare the financial influence or impact that Dion could have compared to Dr. Like, Charlamagne, what if, we, what if he said he donated $5? Like, what would you just have proved from that? I do. But my point is, I'm fococused Jesus on Christ. destroying the school to prison pipeline. 
I'm you know building two is independent the schools is, from I, the I ground. I applaud you for that. Black <sighs> money. Nobody you interviewed man. in this studio ever is doing that. Not one of them. You understand me. So I'm doing my part, and that's why I can expect Deion Sanders to do his part. And that's why lashes also go. As they say, watch who you're talking to. It's <laughs> Shannon Sharp. Because you know Shannon that. Sharp on national television. You know, you know, Dr. Umar asked for how long it was taking the school to take and all this stuff and all this donations and all that. So, you know, that's why people come to him and attack his credibility. He didn't even want to go to an HBCU. He wanted to go to a PWI. And every time celebrities try to do something good, black people want to beat them up. I beg your pardon, <laughs> Shannon Sharp. I know that you don't date black women. You have no loyalty to black women. Now you want to tell the world you have no loyalty to the HBCU. If you didn't want to go to Savannah, what is Shannon Sharp say? because Shannon Sharp is doing my part. And that's why I can expect Deion Sanders to do his part. And that's why lashes also go to Shannon Sharp. Because Shannon Sharp on national television said he didn't even want to go to a HBCU. He wanted to go to a PWI. And every time celebrities try to do something good, black people want to beat them up. I beg your pardon, Shannon Sharp. I know that you don't date black women. You have no loyalty to black women. Now you want to tell the world you have no loyalty to the HBCU. If you didn't want to go to Savannah State, you keep that to yourself, you Negro pen. You don't tell the whole world that you didn't want to go. To <laughs> you can tell you don't fuck with uh, Shannon Sharp. P PWI stands for Predominantly White Institute. To a HBCU and then try to chide the black community for asking Deion Sanders to have a little commitment. Well, I, I, with all that said, Dr. Umar, what do we do for HBCUs moving forward? Because Deion okay. gone, but HBCUs we, gonna we still be here. I just guys. told you, black celebrities mm -hmm. have to come together, stop buying chains, stop going to clubs and strip joints, stop with all the expensive clothing, stop cooning, and use some of this disposable income that we spend it on Christmas gifts right now and come up with a funding source. So many celebrities went to HBCUs. Why can't they be the catalyst of a black celebrity and grassroots? Because we should be paying to Absolutely. movement. I think one thing Nick Cannon did, he, he went to uh, Howard. Um, you got a lot of black celebrities who send their kids there somebody who I recently heard was teaching a course there um, so you got people making efforts in, in some of the ways that they to don't finance this I'm simply Stop saying cool. Dion could have been the face <laughs> of that and was beginning to be and he allowed himself to get bought out by a white but university. he left the blueprint here's what I'll say on this I'll say this no bullshit coming from my state of mind most of these people bro when they go be a celebrity when they go be a, a, a huge athlete or a rapper they, a lot of times, over the trajectory of their life, and you can go back to who they were before any of that, they probably weren't the biggest social justice, you know, here's my racial group advocates before or after the money and fame or none of that. So when they get their money or fame, they still have the same mentality and same uh, perspective on life that they had. Before they blew up. So then they get in these positions. Now I'm worth 10 million, 5 million, 100 million. They are still on the mentality of, I'm successful. I'm living the American dream. What does that look like? I need a faster car. I need a bigger chain. I need my clothes to match. I need my, my chick to be bad and thick. I need, you know, clout and all that. So they, they are, their mind and mentality is just like kind of from staring at the ground, if we want to say that. Um, and then Dr. Umar comes up here and be critical of these people. They, they literally just need mentorship. They A lot of people just don't think that grand. A lot of people just don't see the chessboard like that. They don't they don't come into the world and be successful and say, all right, I'm doing this for the people. I mean, let's look at it. Let's look at a lot of the lyrics that blow them up and the contribution that these lyrics and these careers contribute to the culture. They, they clearly don't care about a grand scale, you know, impact. You see what I'm saying? So... I just feel like a lot of people need to grow, you know what I'm saying? And they just are unconscious of what they're actually doing and what they could be doing. It just seems beyond them. A lot of people don't put that on themselves. Like, it's, it's a lot of responsibility. When their main goal may be, man, I just want to make the most money I can. And, you know, and then you telling me to do something that could jeopardize the money I'm making. That's how I've led my whole life up until this point. You see what I'm saying? Some people just don't see the chessboard like that. That's a, I, don't I wouldn't even, consider them heinous or, you know, or like, you know, whatever, against the cause when a lot of them are. But they just don't know that they don't know. And he allowed himself to get bought out by a white. But he left the blueprint. 
That's it. I don't want to hear about no he blueprint. He left the blueprint. That's like Harriet Tubman saying, I'm not going to help you on the Underground Railroad. I'm going to lead a blueprint. Marcus Garvey, I'm not going to help you with the independence movement. I'm going to lead a blueprint. That's cowardly list, well, man. Have to I'm not, I can't believe, I'm not putting that out on Dion because there's enough of us that can keep these programs sustained if we do what we're supposed to do. Okay, but we can't do that with people running away like Deion Sanders. That was a cowardly move. He was wrong. How many lives did you say Deion get? 50,000. And how much was Shannon shot? Shannon keep cooning. Shannon gonna get about a hundred by now. Goodness. Stephen <laughs> ain't getting about fifty. Shannon keep thousand. <laughs> Candace Owens needs about two hundred fifty thousand. Bro, why? Why when he asks him this, he really looks up and thinks. Wait, hold on. What, what did I write down yesterday? Hold on, hold on. He did some shit this morning. That was an extra twenty thousand. Hold on, hold on. Like 000. you really look at Dr. Omar's face. He be calculating, bro. And how much for Shannon shop? <laughs> Shannon keep cooning. Shannon gonna get about a hundred by now. Goodness, Stephen ain't getting about fifty thousand. Yeah, Candace Owens needs about two hundred fifty thousand last year. Damn, so they're doing documentaries on Black Lives Matter, which is appropriate because they were wrong for misappropriating that money. But where's Candace Owens' documentary on the Brett Favre situation or the Jerry Jones situation? My disagreement with my sister. She's she ain't gonna survive that. Finance her to embarrass her. She ain't gonna make it. Check. No black person should do that. She ain't and gonna also, make it. I just want to tell y'all, Doctor Umar is gonna be on my late night talk show this yes, week. So. week. <laughs> and we gonna have a I hell of a wait. time. I like listen. Envy, I want your listeners. Please support the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy. That's right. Get on your cash app, dollar sign FDMG School. Mm -hmm. Dollar sign FDMG School. Get on your PayPal. PayPal.me slash FDMG Academy. PayPal.me slash FDMG Academy. And make sure you subscribe to my video on demand site, www.drumar.tv. www.drumar.tv. Parents, stop getting your children tested for special ed. I'm going to say this and I'm done. Mm -hmm. In the post COVID era, we're seeing a surge of black children be put in special ed. Mm -hmm. The schools are exploiting the miseducation that our children were subjected to during COVID when they were home learning, learning on the laptop, okay? And they're now using these academic losses as a justification for special ed. So I'm telling every black mother and father out there, if the school asks you to get your child tested, you tell the school that the reason my child is behind grade level in reading or math is because they didn't get adequate instruction during COVID. They're not going to special ed. Get them a tutor from that Title I money. And if your child doesn't go to a title one school you dig in your pocket and you pay for a tutor they don't need an iep two they great don't books need right special here. ed they two great books right here by dr claude anderson paranomics black labor white wealth you know what i'm saying educate yourselves i'm gonna just throw that in there pretty relevant a tutor if you need to reach me 215-989-9858 215-989-9858 black celebrities Hold must on. be held accountable make sure you watch dr umar tonight on hell of a week 11 30 p.m right. on comedy central there you have i it. always appreciate you dr yeah, thank you so much yes, sir. <laughs> appreciate you all right well we gotta take our flick right it's the breakfast club it's the breakfast club no he just said that bitch on fire though but damn, chat, damn, 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 damn. You know what I'm saying? What I will say on this discussion, man, is that a lot of people just ain't got that dog in them. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people don't come to the table with these, with, with this on their mind. You know, influence, cultural change, um, social justice, or, you know, a lot of people don't educate themselves on that way. They don't, they don't think like that. So a lot of times they come in these situations and, um, you know, it's like, how can I describe it? You know, I love using metaphors because there's so much to be explained at once. A metaphor oftentimes will capture it. Um, it, it. It'd be like never realizing you were even, like, think of it like this. Imagine it's a chess game. Number one, you didn't even realize a game was being played, right? You didn't, you didn't, even, you didn't even know you were on a board. You have no clue. You're just saying, I want some money. I want to grind. I want to hustle. I'm going to get that money by any means. I want that success. So in your world, you just want success. And then whatever that looks like to you, it could be a, a big chunk of cash. It could be a huge house. It could be bad chicks. It could be fast cars, nice cars. That's just where your head is at, right? Um, and then it, and then you you're, you didn't even realize you're on a chessboard. You're a part of a chess game. You're not even realizing that. You're just succeeding in your own way. And as you upgrade yourself as an individual and, and go up and up and up, then you look up and you don't even realize you're on a chessboard, but you're a fucking a, a rook. You damn near a, a queen or, or a bishop or something like you. You are being used like a pawn. You're not even you're not even like controlling your own moves, but then you're not even 
it's already bad enough you don't even realize you're on the board. But then it's even worse. You're not even using the full potential of the power that your piece has. Your board is already done. Then you get on top of that. A lot of these people be in checkmate before they even realize they had a they had a a chance to play for positioning. And that checkmate could be mental or psychological to whatever level that that person is on. Security is a lot of times that does it for people. Uh, their own lives. If they do something or say something that would get rid of their security or their safety, they 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 will. That's a lot of people's limits. If they do something or say something that will potentially cause harm to their own lives, that's a lot of people's limits. To why you've seen in the past, leader, leaders have been killed or turned out informants etc you know what i'm saying so that's why a lot of times people can't underestimate the severity of this because you just don't know your history and it's not even an american thing it's just what countries do to other countries this shit is this shit is just real life this shit is just this is just real life is that the battlefield is in mass media control or popu mass population attention and influence that is the new battle. The new battle is not like it's still that's still also happening too. It's not like I'm a rage your country, and you know, f throw my banners on your wall and force your children to do this. It's that um, what can we do around the internet? What can do? What can we do with these influencers? You know what I'm saying? Cause guess what? The influencers, like I said, they don't even realize that they're a piece on the board. Meanwhile, the other pieces or the other players are playing for them. They're making moves for them based on what they are concerned and care about. Could be money, could be status. A lot of these suckers fall out for lust. One of the lowest of vices. Lust. Lust. Boom. Blackmail. Ego. Boom. I'm telling you, so many ways to checkmate people, and it's so easy when you're not paying attention. 